I, I did cocaine with a substitute, and that's all. <laughs> that's as far as I got. We just. How old were you? I was maybe eighteen, maybe like the year I graduated high school. We were doing coke with uh, the sub, one of our substitutes. And was he a homosexual or she, not? She no, it was a chick. Was a woman. Yeah, she was wow. just um, sub subs of the end, dude. What class? She was an English sub, so she was an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so she wasn't smart. She was probably trying to go out and sniff some coke and, you know, fuck her way into the lower middle class. She was fuck her way into a little Levitt house in Long Island. Good woman. <laughs> if I come to you right now, let's go back. You're, the, you're a mortgage broker in Long Island. I meet you in a diner, which is you call your office. The Imperial yeah. Diner in Freeport. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, you go. We got to make it real. Yeah. So it's the Imperial <laughs> Diner in Freeport on Merrick Road. <laughs> Yeah, you say meet me at the office, and you. I hear you well, hang hey, up. We'll spill hot coffee on you by mistake, and look at you and go. Yeah, yeah. And when you tell me to meet you at your office, I hear the clang of a payphone when you hang up. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I meet your office. I come in. I say, "Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you, Mr. Dylan. Me and my wife just got married. Um, you know, I'm a comedian. I, I saved up about 80k. Um, uh, you know, she wants to live. In, we're having a baby. She it, wants Mr. to live on the island. You got Mr. Pop. I'm very glad. Can I get a loan? Not only can you get a loan, but let me let me tell you something. Yeah. How much of that eighty k are you prepared to spend on the property? I don't know, uh, D Mr. Dillon. Uh, you know, I'm a pretty conservative guy. I saved every single dollar right. from my more recent how much shows. You, how much are you prepared to spend? Um, hold on. Let me go into Maurice's brain. No, no, no. Of that eighty thousand, how much would you like to spend? Are you I, willing to spend all of it? I, I'm willing to spend. I'm willing to spend about sixty or seventy of it. Mr. Pappas, guess how much of that eighty you're gonna have to spend? How much? Nothing. What? Nothing. You're not going to spend anything. Because let me explain something to you. Sit down. The wife is lovely. Would you like a cup of coffee? Yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah. Can, wait, can Mr. I get Pappas. A, can I get pancakes while I'm here? Yeah, you can yeah. get anything. The bricks and sticks of your house yeah. appreciate. Uh -huh. The frame. The land. Uh -huh. They appreciate value. <laughs> you know what your money does in your house for you, Mr. Pappas? It does absolutely nothing. You know what the wealthiest people do with real estate, Mr. Pappas? Mm. A lot of them finance it. Why? Because your mortgage is your only tax write-off. It is the only write-off. It is your only fucking weapon against the federal government. The larger the loan you take, the better it is for you financially. And you take that $80,000, and I'm not wrong, by the way, and you put, well, I'm a little, and you put it in tax-exempt securities like Roth IRAs. Mr. Pappas, you maximize the amount of, of tax-exempt retirement accounts that you put your money in with that $80,000 you make it work for you you do not sink it into a house yes or yes so the reality is this we're taking the biggest loan possible <laughs> that Mr. Pappas will set you free. <laughs> now sign this piece of paper for Christ. And at that point, you and your wife are crying. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, we sign papers, then you, you go die. But how do you get the loan from the bank? They're well, giving I mean, it away. Back in the day, what are we doing? We're talking about now or back in the day? No, back, back in the day. day. Yeah, back in the doing? day, you go to the bank. I said, Kelly, <laughs> we got one. And Kelly, I said, Mr. Pappas and his wife, Brittany's from Long Island. They want to go buy a piece of marble hunk of shit. <laughs> And Kelly has got coke running down her nose from last night. She's got a fucking double tall non-fat latte from Starbucks non-fat. She's not getting anyone. When did you start doing comedy? 2010. What made you get up? What made me do it the first time? Yeah. I was in the mortgage business and uh, in 2009. College educated? Uh, no, dropped out of community college uh, to do Percocet and sell subprime mortgages in Long Island, which I still believe is the what I will return to. Uh, <laughs> I believe stand-up is a sabbatical from my true calling, which is to work in a strip mall uh, and have great lunches, serious lunches, and uh, and take Percocet and 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 and, and telemarket mortgages in the tri-state area. It's nice to watch people look at a lot of your guests and go, "Will they be people that I know in five years, or will they be dead in the street?" <laughs> And that's that what I like God, about, man. that's what this show really is. People are going, hey, I wonder if that guy will be a household name or will they find him dead in a hotel room in Tampa? We don't know. Who Tampa. knows? It is, Who knows? It's definitely it's Florida. It's just what the show is. The Alex it's, Jones thing's fucking... It's, it's wild. It's, it's wild. wild. Here's the thing. I don't, I don't really listen to InfoWars, yeah. but I do listen to him when he's on I mean, Rogan. I got to be honest with you. He's the most entertaining person 
in the world. I mean, I hate, listen, is it bad? <laughs> sure. Am I going to get in trouble for saying this? Yes. Does he incite violence? Maybe. The point I'm making, okay? The point, the point I'm making is purely, forget morals, forget any of this. Take yourself back to smoking weed in the back of a car in 11th grade yeah. when you were just like, Things were just funny or they weren't. Yeah. They were just entertaining or they weren't. <laughs> yeah. You either watched it and went, what the fuck is this? I heard Alex Jones, okay, go on a rant about <laughs> demons, like literal demons <laughs> for 20 minutes, 20 minutes hard about <laughs> demons. And let me tell you right now, I... And he started a show one night and he goes like this. He goes, ladies and gentlemen, he goes, we are bracing. This first words out of his mouth. He goes, ladies and gentlemen, we are bracing for thermonuclear war. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you, how do you not? Yeah. How do you not laugh? How do you not be entertained? I mean, need to go. <laughs> the view is the, it's one of the worst. First of all, when I grew up, yeah. daytime TV was about like seasonal cupcake recipes. Yeah. Yeah. Why are we doing a Holocaust at 11 a.m.? <laughs> it's 11 in the morning. Why are we doing the Holocaust? Calm down. Daytime TV is for people to get into the day. Yeah. Ease into the day. Yeah. Little coffee, get the toast down. You know, we don't need to be doing genocide early. Like, early, relax. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's gotten crazy now. We have an Anxiety Tuesday segment on this podcast where we talk about mental health, what you do to help your mental health in a positive way. Do you do anything? Do you have an affirmation or do you meditate or do you walk? What do you do? When I get anxious. Yeah. And when I feel like things aren't going well for me and I feel like I'm, you know, I'm feeling panicky. You know what I mean? And this is literally, and I'm recommending this to everyone because, and I'm not joking, I'm like, I'm not even kidding. And you go, oh, he's gonna have a joke at the end of this. But this, I'm dead serious about this. Literally, when I feel like I can't go on anymore, I do something which people do, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't even know that it helped anxiety. And it's called heroin. <laughs> I do heroin. Yes. And it is so helpful to me because you're in a state of euphoria. You actually, your eyes roll back in your head and you're kind of like not even on the planet anymore and you feel like you're floating. <laughs> and it's been described as the most intense orgasm you've ever had times a million, right? Wow. It's just endless feelings of euphoria, true euphoria that you can't really get from walking or meditating uh, you can't get to there. Like a lot of people say you can. They're full of shit. Heroin, black tar, China white, whatever it is. You have to shoot it and you can't skin pop. Okay. You have to main lines. You have to find a vein. Yes. And then you have to inject it deep into your vein. Okay. And, and, and but here's how good it is. Um, halfway through the injection, you, it's over. And then sometimes you don't even have the strength to pull the needle out of your hand. That's So up, you yeah. just kind of lay like that with right. the needle and then you're like, did you wear that? Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I that's do. That's what you do. Yeah. So, so let's get into that. Yeah. First, let's just establish that Epstein, you believe Epstein was a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, let's just establish some ground. Who are you working for? <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Hold on. What? Uh, <laughs> yes, I will take okay. the controversial stance that I believe Epstein is a pedophile. Okay. You and, heard it here. Okay. Oh, and boy. you think Ghislaine was his little, his, uh, his 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 runner. Yeah, I think that's pretty well established. Okay. I think Miss Maxwell was involved in some lurid and inappropriate activities. <laughs> okay, so you're about to go have a talk with Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin DM me on Instagram and he wants me to do his podcast, and I was like, absolutely, I'm honored. I can't wait till you find out it's Stephen Baldwin that. Did I, it's, I, it's, it's very be interesting so much because fun. he's. I'm gonna I, get a call from you later today. It's gonna be you yeah, and fucking Stephen yeah. Baldwin. It's actually what's interesting is like he's had issues in the past couple Who? of months. Alec, Alec? well, you shot the woman. Oh yeah, on the set. Yeah, and it was an accident, was it? This is what I am understood to believe. Yes, you know, but do you believe it? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he would shoot one. Somebody. Do you like a new age uh, Avril Lavigne? Remember her? 
Oh yeah, she Skater did boy. say that she likes Avril Lavigne. I think is Avril Lavigne no longer mm. a hit? She's just kind of. Oh, uh, I mean, Avril Lavigne is she like, died and she had like it. some medical issue. Best case, she died. <laughs> That's the best case. Avril Lavigne is dead. I mean, she's God only knows. There's a rumor. She's probably in a Ralph's right now, shooting heroin. You know, <laughs> things haven't worked out. Yeah, do, do you know she she got super sick mm. with what? Mm. Fame? I don't yeah. know. Reality. Yeah, there was this disease called uh, people oh, moving on. Lyme disease. <laughs> <laughs> no, she had Lyme, she had Lyme she disease. She caught it. It was fatal. She told me to go, I think he did it to see what it feels like to take a human life. Yeah. Um, I would like to not believe that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's interesting. There's clearly nobody on his team <laughs> that, that wants him to do who a podcast. That to you? I literally forget who it was. There's no way you could forget who said no, that. No, but I do forget. Somebody said that. I think it would be that he would just try to see, like, yeah. at this point in his life, he's like, I've done it all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What does this feel like? Yeah. 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 Do I want to come after? Yeah. Do I feel sad? <laughs> uh, there's no way anyone on his team is jazzed about him doing a podcast, Tim, right? Did you say that? I didn't say it. No. <laughs> Are you sure? I would have said I said it. Tim? It might have been Giannis. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Just throw it on you. <laughs> we have Tim Dillon here. Hey! Yes. hey. Um, Thank you. Good to be I here. heard you put the call in to get Whoopi out of there. I did I because I wanted her to take a time out <laughs> and have a think. And I wanted her replaced with Roseanne. Oh. Bring back Roseanne. Right. Yes. How about that? Who is Jewish? Okay. Ooh. And then that's a nice trade-off. Wait, is she Jewish? Roseanne is very Jewish. So she's been moonlighting as this Midwestern housewife this whole time. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, but she's like super into Israel, super Jewish. Oh, my mm. God. So we get Whoopi out. Okay. Take a chill pill. Mm. Take a break. Mm. Mm. Read the Torah. Whatever you have to do. <laughs> Go to a few bagel shops. Listen to people. Is that the atonement? Do some listening. Little locks. Locks and listening tour. And then bring Roseanne in, who's criminally insane. But yes. <laughs> Jewish and fun. Yeah. And she'll go on about QAnon mm. and stuff like that. And mm. it'll just make it a fun show for two weeks. So we fix the show. That's how to That's fix it. That's your goal. Well, the the real way to fix the show okay. is to destroy it. Um, to, uh, and to this put seems everyone to be your solution yeah, with most things. Most things <laughs> do need you know, sales guys are supposed to have money, confidence. Yeah. We had none of that left. We've been broken, beaten down and broken. Um, and the dude who was kind of the head of the operation was this drunk named Bob. Bob had, lost, <laughs> Bob had lost his license for a DUI, so we had to take turns driving him home. He was our boss. <laughs> Everyone had yeah, to just yeah, take shit. Yeah, and when he, you have to drive your boss, and he would fall asleep because you'd drink all day at Chili's, and then he'd fall asleep uh, on the way home in your car and then wake up like at a stoplight to just deliver a cryptic message. Like, he'd be like, and they wake up and go, we're in big trouble. I'll tell you that much, we're in big trouble. <laughs> and you'd go, what? And then he'd go, no, no, make a laugh at Park Avenue. <laughs> and so he would just deliver these cryptic messages. <laughs> this is how that company started. You want to hear how this yeah. that company started? I pitched this as a show and nobody bought it. Are they fucking nuts, Sickler? Yeah. So here's what happened. This is how the company started. This guy, Bob, was a high-level guy and a major mortgage lender in Long Island. He's a CFO. He sees that this company is going to kind of crumble. He sees the writing on the wall. It's like, we're in trouble. We're holding on to a lot of bad debt. This thing's just going to go. It's going left. We got to get out. So he pulls his buddy. His buddy and him, instead of evacuating the business, right? This is such a Long Island fucking thing. They go, we're going to do it the right way. We have all this know-how. We're going to put together a small company. We're going to do it the right way. So they go up to this guy's house upstate, which is partially done. They're getting sauced. They're talking about the new company they're going to have. Whoever this other guy is, I don't know, falls through a second floor that's not completely done and dies. No. Dies. Come on. While it, they're up there talking about correct. this Correct. Instead of abandoning the project, Bob then walks around at his funeral and goes, I just want to let you know I'm going to open the company for your father. <laughs> He was a good man. He believed in tight lending standards. We're going to open this company. <laughs> the underwriting, it was... Cr At the, the company funeral. started in death. Yeah. It started in death. And so I worked there for about a year and a half. Um, very sad Christmas party. Very, very sad. I'll bet, yeah. Very sad. So that's my question. Is it better just to stay home, find work, and just struggle if you have to? Or is it better to travel miss out on family time but get better pay um mm. 
Yeah, gang, gang. Buzz, buzz, nigga. Buzz, buzz, nigga. Gang, gang, buzz. play boys. <laughs> Depends well, let's, on your let's family, start. We, we can start with Brendan here because Brendan's missed half of his children's life to be fucking performing in Boise next week. So, what do you say, Brendan? Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, the pandemic made me realize I tore too much, man. So I cut it down to two weekends a month moving forward. I used to do three to four, right? But so I cut it down to two, so I'm around my kids more. But Theo, you yeah. don't have to. I mean, you just own a fucking backpack, so you can tour all year long. Yeah, that's true, man. You're right. I think what this guy is saying is, first of all, I like where this guy is at. This is the kind of guy you need help with. We don't need to be storming a capital. We need to storm AT&T. We need to storm fucking right. Dunkin' Donuts headquarters. We need to storm Zabara. We need to store tech is the new fossil fuels, guys. Okay? Yeah. And so we need mm -hmm. to be storming places that it hits them in the wallet. God, he now, this guy's PayPal. question is, should he you look insane, work or dude. raise his family? Oh, yeah, my bad. Sorry, I kind of diverted. What do you say there? Well, Tim? that's his question. Should he work or <laughs> yeah. raise his family? Yeah. Well, I would think that he could maybe both. Yes. Find a happy balance. <laughs> I mean, that might be a good idea. Like, this guy, I think I think he wants us to co-sign his decision of, like, just abandoning his family <laughs> so he could fucking fix cell phone towers. I'm like, dude, you got to check in on the fam every now and then, you know. Yeah, maybe I mean, chill it's out the craziest, on the It's the craziest. There was a lot of fun. In I, that in that crack house, I hear. <laughs> there were a lot of positive people. I mean, I know. I mean, genuinely positive. I know you mean Gen this, though. Genuinely, like genuinely this. grateful and positive people. Like there were people there that, if you gave them a cigarette, would act like you paid for their college. <laughs> This question I've ever heard. He's like, "Hey guys, uh, I, I work a lot and I travel. I want to know: Do I still have to talk to my family?" It's like, I'm, yeah, I'm dude. putting up all these 5G towers, man. Yeah. I haven't seen my son in three years. Yeah, do I technically have to like see and speak to my family? I mean, I have a job. I have a job. Why would I? Yeah, dude, do both. Yeah, that's not a bad thought. That's a decent suggestion, Tim. Were you ever? I gave him money. Did you ever? I bought a subprime mortgage. I bought a house with a subprime mortgage. You did? Yeah. Did so when you look in their face, you see that <laughs> there's nothing there. So I just sat on the bus, and this Russian woman said to me, "She goes, you give tour, you fat fuck." <laughs> I said, "Listen to the automated tour." I said, "I'm not doing it today. You're the only people on the bus." She goes, "You I pay money. You give tour." You give tar. And I said, no. you Because I could, I could put it on the automated when I was being lazy. And the automated would be like, and the automated was, would, would, it was supposed to be hooked up with a GPS, but it was never where it should be. <laughs> so we'd be by Central Park, and they'd be like, you are seeing the 9-11 memorial. And everybody would look out, <laughs> like, where's 9-11? You know, they had no idea. Because the GPS, these companies don't care because these buses, there's no repeat business. Right. You just, you, 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 you bang them. Bill Burt has a great thing where he talks about the guys who sell tickets to these buses. They're all Africans and Haitians, and they all have deep machete scars in their faces. <laughs> they make eight or nine grand a month, and they send that all back to Africa. I think Burr, I, I haven't heard of it, but Burr, somebody told me that Burr either talks about it on a podcast or did a, does a bit about it. But they're, they're aggressive salesmen. They'll fight each other in the street. Did you ever get to the, like, did you ever have somebody, whatever, who's, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but applying and you looked at their stuff, and you're like, there's no way this we can give this guy anything. Well, the worst one we had was a guy who was clearly, like, had dementia mm -hmm. or didn't know where he was. And his son wanted to open up a strip club in Miami. And his son just took all the money out of his house. And we were sitting at the closing, and we're signing papers. And this old guy is, like, struggling to sign papers. And his son is like, keep signing, Daddy. It's almost over. And the closing attorney said, I'm not really comfortable with this. And I'm like, yeah, it ain't great. But, you know... I mean, mean, at that point, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, yeah. shout out to the Vasquez's. Um, <laughs> but there again, it's a guy that came to me. He's like, my father's, you know, an old guy. I want to suck all the money out of his house. Yeah. And go up in a strip club. It's yeah. like, all right. How's that strip club doing? You know, I don't know, Tom, but <laughs> if I was a betting man, yeah. you know, I don't know. I bet that's a great business. Though. I think it I is. Really and, and I, I love sales. I miss it. And yeah. I yeah. just, I love it. I love a. I love sitting in a room with uneducated people <laughs> calling people over the phone and trying to build an empire. <laughs> I grew up oh. with real music. Jada Kiss is the best. My father and mother used to play Jada Kiss around the house. I was conceived. They loved the locks. <laughs> My father and mother loved the locks. Uh, they were just an Irish Catholic family and they loved the locks. They loved the locks, yeah. And I just grew up with like 
going to concerts. Like I remember we went to the United Palace, which was a theater in Harlem, and we saw Jada Kiss, Noriega, Styles P, Foxy Brown, and he, you know, Styles P had that song, I get high, I get high. Everybody was just smoking weed. Like, yeah. those were good times. You were with mommy, that was a now, family like, outing. Now, like, rap concerts in the middle of it, they tell you to vote. Yeah, no, no, no. Can you imagine? Yeah. Like, can you imagine? Does anything feel less cool in the yeah. middle of a concert? People being like, are you registered? It's like, yeah. what? No, dude. Well, Do you I mean, have a voting could plan? You ima- could you imagine? What? Could you imagine, yeah, like a Jay Z concert or like a freaking R.I.P. D.M.X. concert? Yeah. They put out a video of Greta Thunberg. Yeah, no. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. Ghosts at the Comedy Store. Uh, I'm currently watching the Ghost Adventures episode, and they're at the Comedy Store. So yeah, um, you guys ever had anything happen to you guys? But can you understand it? Gang, gang, ghost, ghost. Go on, you guys go first. I, I will say in terms of just creepy oh, things at the comedy right store, away. I felt like a weird, like a banshee. You know what a banshee is? Yeah. It's like an Irish. Like, no, I felt like Brendan. a weird, like feminine energy that was very like chaotic and, and bad and dark and evil. Uh, That's coming Whitney. Down that was stairs Whitney. one day. <laughs> and it was, it was Whitney Cummings. <laughs> <laughs> so that's. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta be very careful. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, yeah. They're closing all the parking garages in New York now at midnight because homeless people, I guess, are just walking down into them and they're like, hey, this is a fun cave. Yeah, yeah. What could happen here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like cars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like I imagine like homeless people like there's a there's a a cave full of luxury cars two blocks away. Yeah. We don't have to be in the rain tonight. Right. And so they are closing those at midnight. So then me and my my uh, opener, we get back and we're driving around the city trying to find a spot. Everything's just weird, man. We went into a bodega at like one. We're like standing there. There's a homeless woman in there begging for tea. The dude's like, it's your third tea. And then you're looking at two guys that are kind of walking around the bodega and you're like, something feels off. Like, are they about to whip a gun out? Am I just paranoid because of the news? Nobody's out at night. New York City used to be, and I lived there for years. Bumping, dude. Bumping. 3 a.m., I'm in, I'd be in a diner yelling at people yeah. about how fucked this business was. You know, yeah. I have been denied the <laughs> amount of bitter, <laughs> resentful bile that came out of my mouth as marinara sauce was flying out of it, mozzarella stick bites, just being like, the denial, this bitch gets yeah. a special. Um, <laughs> just nasty, real horror. I wasted so much in New York. Like, I loved it. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah. But like uh, just the amount of time I spent walking around being angry yeah. and not in awe of what an amazing city it was. Like my opener, he he paints this picture of like, it's so amazing. He's like, it's just so easy to meet girls and you're dating yeah, and yeah. you're just, you're just there. You guys can go get margaritas. And I'm like, but what about the, all the hatred? Like, didn't you just walk around every day consumed with a, a darkness in you you didn't know how to get rid of? He's like, well, not really, no. He's like, I was dating, and I'm yeah. like, but what about the late nights on the roof of your building smoking a cigarette, cursing God? <laughs> because, and it, so I, but I, I love it there. I, yeah, it's one of those things, man. It's like old people have Facebook. That's yeah. where you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you go to scream yeah. into the void, talk about your knee operation. <laughs> yes. Talk about Donald Trump. <laughs> Talk about dead animals. Talk Scream about into the void. I yeah. mean, that's Anchor. what it is. it is. That's what you're there. That's what it's for. I miss it a little. Never live there again uh, because me and New York have that relationship where we destroy each other. Um, I was a tour guide. I ruined people's lives. I ruined vacations that people had saved up their entire life to come to New York. A, uh, somebody parked a Volkswagen rabbit on this guy's leg one time outside of our schoolhouse, and I saw a virgin fucking <laughs> lift it right off his leg. Wild. Yo, what? And this was in fucking, who knows when it was. Every scene is from like the movie Powder. <laughs> Every scene, it's amazing. What are you talking about? <laughs> Every scene you of your life. Like stories like that? I've never seen a virgin pick up a car. Yeah. They pick up AK-47s now. That's the problem. <laughs> Virgins now are picking up AR-15s. 
Hopefully well, they start picking up cars again. That well, would be nice. They need to start That'd passing out some pussy then, bro. I agree with you. Because they're shutting down all the pussy, bro. That's who's doing it. That's right. We got a version right here. <laughs> Let's hear this young woman. This is the man. farthest thing from a basic bitch question. What's up, Theo? This question's for all three of you guys. You can't leave the room until you... Fall. Buddy, we can't thank you enough for coming in. Oh, thank you for this. having me. Love the hoodie. Polo, look at this him. This is a 3XL from DXL. Yes, sir. Oh. Who does not sponsor me, but should. And what's great about when they make clothing for fat people is they go, why do we make it loud? Yes. <laughs> and let's give them fatigues because they're not in the military sure. and can't be. <laughs> but if they feel everything is the military when you're at a certain weight, everything is an obstacle yeah, course. Serve it, yeah. So they have this. And I don't know if you noticed, but these are polo horses. I did in notice the that. Oh, that's yeah. pretty classy. Yeah. Oh, it's classy. It's real DJ Khaled. <laughs> <laughs> I got another one. Yeah. Form a human centipede. What's the order going to be? Oh, interesting. Oh, my God. Shit. What are you so on? What website are you on, man? <laughs> These are our fans. Yeah. <laughs> These are people coming in from uh, 8chan <laughs> to discuss. It's 4chan now, dude. Right. They took four away. Uh, <laughs> hmm. We're well, eating cleanest, so I would probably say you up top. Yeah. Man. Tight. Tight. You're up front. No I got to go in the back because I have the least <laughs> amount of going on in my career. That's true of the caboose, dude. Yeah, I have the least <laughs> amount going on. My manager would be like, you're lucky to be there. <laughs> you eat who's ever ass. <laughs> they tell you to eat. Don't start any problems. York, to just see it. And I would grab the microphone and I'd go, this city sucks and I am dying in this city. <laughs> I have nothing and everyone I know has nothing. Everyone. I said, I know some of the most talented people, and they're getting nowhere. And people were like, this is really, we just, just want to see the Lion King. We just want to see the Lion King. Were you doing bus tours? Yeah, double-decker bus tours. I would stand on the bus, and I would just go out there, and I would tell people, I would say, they'd be like, it seems like you have such a fun job. I say, ask Winter. You know how many, how many operations Winter's had on her foot? Six. She's had six foot operations. She's 68 years old. Okay? She doesn't want to show you Carnegie Hall anymore. <laughs> she wants the long sleep. Like, it was such... <laughs> it was bad. It happens, dude. Money doesn't make everything. It really just doesn't make everything great, you know? No, it doesn't. It helps sometimes. It helps things, yeah. yeah. What they say, somebody said it helped me make you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. So that's what somebody said. Right. Uh, that's a poor person saying that. <laughs> That's a homeless person's idea of what money is. You get cool and warm. It's like, no, there's many other things you get. That's an insane, that's like the lowest level of what money can do. Do you think you get water when you're thirsty and food when you're hungry? I don't know if those songs are going to last. This is what all old people say. You know what I'm saying? They're Have like, you Yo, seen the back new video? Day, uh, like Ed Sheeran's a no, fucking but, but, yeah. monster. No, no, he is. That's yeah, true. literally. He's it's a monster. He's a literal <laughs> monster. From, <laughs> he play, no, he looks like he lives under a bridge. Troll. This is what I love about like, this is, and you'll understand this because you've been in the business for a long time. Like Ed Sheeran's a guy that fucks everybody up who just goes, well, yeah, man, you just got to be hot. She's got to be hot and you'll succeed. Yeah. And then you see that bridge troll <laughs> selling out arenas. And you're like, oh, nothing, Matt. Nothing means anything. Everything's chaos. I don't even know yeah, what. Yeah. Well, he's like, good. He's legitimately He's good, good. but it's like it, it would make you feel better if he looked like Shawn Mendes. So you could go, well, of course. Yeah. But then you look at this guy. You're like, oh, I guess anyone can succeed. <laughs> Literally anyone. I mean, he looks like a Make-A-Wish kid who didn't die. And... <laughs> I'm I love when like laugh. a black chick comes to my show by herself and, and she and goes, Jesus I'm a huge great. fan. That's and I go, huge. fuck yeah. I like that so much more. When a guy that looks like me says to my fan, I'm like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> when a small Asian elderly woman comes up to me at the end of this, which I've never had happen. <laughs> I'll be very honest. That's never happened in real life. Okay? It's never happened. <laughs> yeah. Ever. But I want that to happen. Like, I want her to come up to me, not even speak, just nod, and then walk out. <laughs> And that's what I'm waiting for. That's why. I, that's why I keep doing it. The small is just. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I've wanted. And that's what I want. I don't need a fucking guy from you know sh the suburbs of Chicago <laughs> who looks like he failed a police test like I did, and you know blamed it on Jews or something, <laughs> telling me I thought that was a good rant. Yeah, of course you did. Of course you did. It's a guy like Bill Burr said. It's a guy that just lived on the top of a building. Yeah. His whole life. And this is the way they talk. This is the way they talk. I wish her well. Weak. 
Yeah. You know? And you, that's just not, I think, ideal qualities for a president. It was fun for a while. I was on board. And then Trader Joe's got burnt down. Yeah. And I said to myself, like, <laughs> this will not end. He won't, he won't end. Like, he will just keep <laughs> pouring gasoline on this until this entire country is at war with each other. I'm not even a political guy. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> yeah. But I just walk outside. I look around. I go... This is probably not good. <laughs> yeah, I see overturned cop cars. People are throwing Molotov cocktails. I'm like, what happened here? <laughs> we got to change course a little bit. Bring in Biden. Let him sleep in the chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Let yeah. that old fuck die in the chair. Who cares? Weekend at Bernie's. Who cares? Just give people health insurance and go back to it being boring. Yeah. Just let people get an operation and go back to, <laughs> let's let entertainers be entertaining. We don't need the president. Let's let Jimmy Fallon be funny again. Let's not chain him to a desk and make him apologize. He did blackface in 96. <laughs> let's let people be funny that should be funny. And let's get an old, boring person as the president. I know a lot of cops that aren't heroes. Can we cut it out? Stop with the hero shit, by the way. Yeah. No one's a hero. No Nobody's one's a hero. a hero. Cops, nurses, military, firefighters. No one's a hero. We all have jobs. Yes. Stop. Stop with this horse shit. Heroes are from fictional narratives and books and yes. odysseys and stuff. You're a hero when you fucking start doing it for free. It's your job. Yes, you saved a woman in a laundromat. Because you're in a, you're an EMT. You're not a hero. Shut up. Shut, yeah. I hate this shit. I hate it. Heroes. <laughs> Nurses. During Corona, they started acting like they had no idea anyone would get sick. You're a nurse. I'm sorry you didn't get to just hang around stealing Percocet and you had to do your fucking job. <laughs> I Damn. tried to get a... You know, I had a publicist for like 25 minutes uh -huh. and... Uh, I fired her after she, uh, two weeks after I uh, did Rogan, she texted me, she went, you did Rogan? So you're like, all right, I gotta go. I said, let's go. Yeah. Also, she asked me to, uh, uh, her ex-boyfriend who had blocked her on Facebook, she wanted me to go and look what relationship status he was in. So I said, she might not what? be the most professional. In this uh, <laughs> oh yeah, this was a real person. And she was charging you real fees? Like, this she was, was charging like me money, and I, and I, so I had to say no to her. And, uh, but she said, she goes, I'm gonna try to get you like, uh, this was a fact. She was trying to get me like, like she wanted Megabus to endorse me because this was like when I used to take Megabuses to shows, like not currently, but like I had a bit about it in my act, like Megabus. So she goes, we'd like, you know, I, I would love, to, you know, we'd love to get, to get a Megabus To get you and Megabus in business <laughs> Wait, together. Wait, explain Megabus to people who Well, don't Megabus know. is just, it's the bus that passes you by and it goes, for a dollar, get on. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's never a dollar, but it's always like, it's right. as the buses go, it's yeah. a pretty good option. It's right. like a double decker, it's college kids, old people. Uh -huh. You know, hippies. It's not that bad. It's not like Greyhound. And then it starts to fall off a little bit. It gets really bad. Uh, Lucky Star. Like, they get real they bad. Get, they get bad. They get bad. But Megabus was one that I would take a lot. And she goes, she goes, I, I, she goes, I said, this was her quote. She goes, it'd be great to get you in business with, with a, a brand like Megabus. <laughs> So I'm still open to that. Uh -huh. like, I'm still open. What was your response to that? Great. <laughs> because that's what this business does to you. Yeah. You're like, absolutely. Yeah. I will advertise anything. So eventually I, I quit that job because I was like, I got to get out of the sales world, which I've been in since I was 22, 21. Really? I've been in sales. And then I left it when I was like 28. I just on and off just mortgages and the copiers I've always been in sales. And then the only job I saw guys like on a tour bus and they were just yelling at, at tourists on a bus that was going through Times Square. And I was like, well, that guy can't have a boss. <laughs> there can't be any background check to do that job. Some these tour guides in New York, they were lunatics, these people, you know, one woman, I swear to God, would just go on and talk about a knee operation <laughs> and the people and they were trying to learn about the Empire State Building. She would say she would hear it. She go, I've had nine operations on the same foot. People would and but people would tip her at the end. It was like, it's, you know, she was an animal, but people felt bad for her. So they <laughs> so they fill the tip cup up at the end. So I was like, oh, these people are also in their own way. Con artists, degenerates, marginalized figures from society. You know, some of them thought they were historians. Some of them, you know, <laughs> they were all full of shit. You know, these guys, they barely knew anything. I, I, I was just like, I'll go up there and make my whole goal was like, I'll make everybody laugh. 
So I would, you know, pass a building. I'd be like, what the fuck's going on in there? You know, I'm like, you know, I was like, you know. What were you making doing that? 15 an hour. 15 an hour, but checks. So that's bad. So I never, so I, 40 hour work weeks, I never left with a check over 350. Okay. But cash tips every day of either no money when I was lazy and didn't want to give the tour and a Russian woman punched me in the stomach once. (laughs) Because we were sitting on the thing. It was Jan- First of all, all the Russians are poor. They come in January, February. They have no fucking money. They're, they're poor. They come the coldest time of the year. And they'd, what, you'd have to do a tour for one Russian couple. And the thing with Russians is they have beautiful blue eyes like huskies, but they have no souls. So when you see, because they have 100 years of atheism, so they have no soul. So there's not, you know, 